It's correct. I learned that. If you want, I left them there. So let's see. Did you have Good evening, everyone. Saturday evening, May 16th. Welcome to our celebration, uh, our Saturday night celebration for the sixth Sunday of Easter. We're coming from the St. Brita Rectory in Brita, Iowa. I'm Father Tim Pick. For any of those who have come across us, I'm a, a parochial vicar for St. Bernard here in Breda and five other parishes in Carroll County. Our presider this evening is our pastor, Father Tim Friedrichsen. My intention for tonight's Mass is for the living and deceased of the Virgil and Della Lappi family, and Father Friedrichsen's intention is for Leon and Dorothy Mashing. Our opening hymn this evening, if any of them should have the breaking and bread missiles at home, is uh, number 547, Glory and Praise to Our God. And we will sing all the verses this evening. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. We, the daughters and sons of him who built the valleys and plains, Praise the wonders our God has done in every heart that sings. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. In his wisdom he strengthens us, like gold that's tested in fire. Though the power of sin prevails, our God is there to save. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. Every moment of every day, our God is waiting to save. Always ready to seek the lost, to answer those who pray. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. God has watered our barren land and sent his merciful rain. Now the rivers of life run full for anyone to drink. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. Isn't that a lovely fourth verse? Very seldom hear that sung. Very seldom. But <clears throat> so appropriate as we are preparing for rain to start here any moment, we hope, uh, and to get some good rain for our growing crops. God has watered our barren lands and sent his merciful rain. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. As we prepare ourselves for this 
celebration this evening, we open ourselves to the advocate, the spirit of truth that the Lord promises his disciples and has given to us, his church. And there we find peace, forgiveness, and joy. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Now we raise our voices in glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, glory to God, Glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits crying out in a loud voice came out of many possessed people and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard 
that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They only had been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all on earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. Blessed be God who refused me not, my prayer or his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter, beloved, Sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may put themselves, may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 
says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. A few years ago, I'm not going to go way back to my seminary years because this time, uh, when I was um, up at St. Mary's in Storm Lake, a young couple came in to be prepared for marriage. And they came in uh, well in advance of the date they wanted to be married because he had never been baptized and he wanted to go through the process of what of RCIA the right of Christian initiation for adults and to be baptized confirmed received the Eucharist before they were married or at least to discern that you know to be open to that and so we were talking a little bit and I said to him so what has brought you to this point to this interest and he looked at his fiance and he looked back at me and said I want to have what she has I honest to God true I still have goosebumps happening today like I did then I want to have what she has I want to have this joy she has, this positive outlook, this sort of sense of hope and peace, a strength that I can see in her that I know comes from her prayer and from her faith, because it often sort of shows itself after she's been at prayer and so forth. And he had started himself sort of praying basically with her and uh, when they were together. I want to have what she has. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. This encouragement in the first letter of Peter comes rather late in the first century when the church is facing persecution and struggle, as he notes later that, you know, there will be people who are against you and people who will defame you and you will suffer. But our hope rests not in things that are external to us, 
but our hope rests in the God who dwells in us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which Jesus affirms to his disciples today, that he who has been dwelling with them will, and when he returns to the Father and sends the advocate, and he himself will now not only dwell with them, but dwell in them. And they will see him. They will see him in their carrying out of the mission that he gives to them. Here he's talking still before his death, but he will give that advocate, that Holy Spirit, as we heard in the second week of Easter, when he appears to them in the upper room and breathes on them. Or if we take the Gospel of Luke, we receive that Holy Spirit in Pentecost, which we will celebrate um, in two weeks. I always got to think about that a little bit. Yeah, so we'll have the Ascension uh, normally on Thursday, but it'll be next Sunday. But this affirmation to us that whatever happens, whatever we're going through, I am there with you. I'm dwelling in you and among you in giving you what she has. The hope, the resilience, the joy. Hope and joy are two of the big words in, I think, in tonight's messages, in the, in the readings. And they are not just passing emotions, but they are attitudes grounded in the God who has been at work for our salvation since he created the world and all the universe. A God who holds all of that creation into being and will bring that all back to him. It is that kind of joy and hope that allows Philip to begin preaching in Samaria. The early followers of Christ are being persecuted in Jerusalem. Stephen has been stoned. Philip and others have left Jerusalem out of fear for their own lives. But here he is in Samaria, a place where there was always tensions between the Jewish people of Judea, near the area of Judah, and this northern area, with Samaria as its capital, called Samaria also as a region or as a, as a country. But he couldn't help but share the reason for his joy, for his hope. And as a result of that, people came to faith. What's left out in this evening's reading in Acts of the Apostles is somewhat unfortunate. I think it was a few verses left out where he also converts a magician who had, had a, a very successful act, let's call it, um, and was able to do all sorts of things that had wowed the people. But now he sees what Philip has, and he says, I want to have what he has more than what I have. I don't want just this act. I want the real thing. I want this indwelling of this risen Lord that he is preaching and sharing. And this sort of amazes some of the other apostles in Jerusalem, and so they got to come and check it out. They heard news that something was happening, so they come and check it out because, really, Samaritans are coming to the faith? Yes, they are. And so then they lay hands on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. The, the Samaritans received the Holy Spirit that the apostles had received. And then they have that ground of hope and joy that we have. And that explanation for our hope First Peter says to us is to be done and given with gentleness and reverence. And for me, when I think about that, it's something I share with uh, family members or friends or parents of members of their family who maybe have fallen away from the church or uh, are struggling or whatever. And I said, well, you can always preach to them, but I think what's gentler 
and more with more reverence is to witness to them, to testify. This is what my relationship with the Lord does for me. And to let them see that, just how we live, the joy and the resilience we can have even in the face of difficulty like we're all facing now. To, be able to still be able to have a sense of, of accomplishment <coughs> and, and joy and peace even though our graduates get no big ceremony this weekend or in the next few days, hopefully we will have that. But to be able to say, you know what, I still know the Lord has helped me to get to this point, helped me reach my goals, and to have some peace and joy in that. To have what she has. She didn't bring her fiance along by setting him down. Now, you have to start believing in God and our Lord Jesus Christ, or I'm not marrying you. She could have done that. I don't know when that would have worked well. <laughs> but what did work well was just being yourself. In relationship with the Lord. And I think we probably all have people in our lives that, you know, sometimes when we're struggling, we look at them and say, oh, I want that again. And then we maybe take some more time in prayer, read a bit more, spend a bit more time with them because they uplift us and they remind us of the ground of our joy and our hope. Unfortunately, that couple moved from St. Mary's. Um, the wedding actually was in um, his or her hometown, I forget. But then they got jobs also back in that area. So I hope, I mean, I saw it, but I'm sure they still do. Now people might say, I want what they have. Can I give you some other things? <laughs> <laughs> I'm loading all my stuff. We profess now our faith in the God who is the ground of our hope and joy. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I, I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. That's on my iPad. I forgot about that. <laughs> With the help of the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth, we pray for the world, the Church, and ourselves, all in need of the love offered by Jesus Christ, the Risen Lord. For the Church, 
that disagreements and factions may be addressed within Jesus' call to live in love and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work for peace and mercy, that their vigilance will be strengthened, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of authority, that the Lord Jesus will guide them to seek the good for all persons entrusted to their care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the special needs during this pandemic, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to healthcare workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach to, out to all in love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our 2020 graduates who have faced so many disappointments and losses during this pandemic, that they nevertheless are proud of their accomplishments and full of hope for their futures. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an expansive respect of all life that protects the unborn and the terminally ill, cares for the environment, respects the refugee and immigrant, seeks health care for all, and raises the poor to greater opportunity and dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our beloved dead, and especially we offer you, ask for your prayers for we received news today of Paul Mesher, I believe from Halber, passed away this morning or passed away today. So we ask you to keep his family in your prayers. And we pray for all our own intentions that we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are the reason for our hope. In that hope, we know that you will hear these and all our heartfelt petitions through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine. Work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, 
but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with, with you, Father. Father. Thank you very much. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacra Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll be back in the church tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, Father Pick presiding and preaching. Um, Again, to all of our 2020 graduates, congratulations on your accomplishments and best wishes and prayers for your future endeavors. And prayers also that we'll find ways that we can publicly acknowledge you and celebrate you yet uh, before you head off into future endeavors. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go, proclaiming the gospel by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Oh, we have quite yet. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should turn. Did you have anything to add to that? No. Okay. No. Our closing song tonight is number 445, For the Healing of the Nations. I think quite, uh, quite appropriate for this time. Kind of, a, yeah. A prayer for all nations of this pandemic. Yes. We will sing all three verses, of course. <laughs> for the healing of the nations, Lord, we pray with one accord. For a just and equal sharing of the things that earth affords to a life of love and action. Help us rise and pledge our word. Lead us now, Lord, into freedom. From despair your world release. That redeemed from war and hatred, all may come and go in peace. Show us how through care and goodness Fear will die and hope increase. You, Creator, God, have written your great name on humankind. For our growing in your likeness, bring the life of Christ to mind, that by our response and service, Earth its destiny may find. Have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow.